Hey everyone, before we start, I want to address something. We had set a goal in the last several videos that we wanted to be able to hit 100,000 subscribers before the end of June. And if we could do that, my wife would do a face reveal. However, after having conversations and further topics, we decided we wanted to adjust what the goal was to be something a little bit more important. We've taken a lot of time to self-reflect mm -hmm. and also to stop avoiding the topics that are hard to talk about on the internet and to talk about in the spaces around us. Given current things that are happening in the world, the idea of hitting a goal that is purely self-serving for us just didn't feel right when other people need more help. So we're changing the uh, terms of the face reveal. There are a lot of people right now in different portions of the world who need a lot of assistance. And while I will make it very clear who I'm talking about, I cannot necessarily say it out loud as YouTube will cause issues with this and not let the video get to the eyes it needs to see if I do say it out loud. These families need help. There's nothing that makes this okay. And rather than try and pursue a goal which might increase a small number on our channel, much rather pursue a goal that helps people who genuinely need it. I have supplied a link in the pinned comment as well as the description of this video in order to go to a GoFundMe to help one of the families that are in desperate need of help at this moment. If we can fund that by the end of June, hopefully so much sooner because this is a literal life and death situation, my wife has agreed to do a face reveal. I know that not everybody has money, but surprisingly, even the smallest amount of money goes far. Most of my videos hit, you know, around 15 to 20,000 views. If every single one of you just donated a dollar or five dollars, that goes far further than you would expect. But if you can't even spare that, which is understandable in this economy, the most powerful thing you can do is share. Think about any time anybody has mentioned a problem that you didn't even think about until somebody else mentioned it, and then somebody else mentioned it, and then somebody else mentioned it. Your voice is your most powerful and helpful tool. So please, use it. We've also um, made the decision to donate $500 to two respective charities um, for $1,000 total. We haven't been doing enough, and I think it's important that we recognize that. Yeah. All that to say, we're trying to do better, and um, sorry we haven't been utilizing this platform properly beforehand. Ultimately, at the end of the day, one time, I made a video on why Critical Role was special to me and that was intended to be the last video ever on this channel because it was a hobby that I had and I was going to throw it away after that. That video hit the algorithm and gained me an audience out of pure luck. And I, as a person, we as people cannot sit here and take an opportunity that was so, so lucky and not use that for other people, not use that to help the people who need it. Because if we want to be people who help others, what other goal is there than to use what we've been given to give to others? What other way can we play our role? So we're sorry for not speaking up on this sooner. I don't care if this loses us anything because it's not worth what we could have lost if we didn't do something to try and help. So alongside that note, I would like to call out all of the TTRPG community. Anybody who has a platform, anybody who has the chance to say anything, to do so, because there are people we can help and there is a way we can outcry and say that this is wrong, what is happening to others. We are talking about people who are in danger, people who are dying, people who need help. And I don't care what that loses us. I only care about being somebody who is willing to help others. So yeah, heavy way to start a video. <laughs>
belly button. The show that was constantly panned for its terrible characterization, strange pacing, and poor redemption arcs. Yes that show. Specifically, I was watching the movie, which while not perfect, definitely has some high quality and insane bangers in its soundtrack. If you like it or not, if you like it or not, I'm gonna be right by your side no matter what. It's a strangely hard hitting moment. The specific moment that got me was near the end of the climactic battle between Steven and the film's main antagonist, Spinel. Spinel was a creature made for fun, made to be loving, a literal pet for the powerful character Pink Diamond, who Steven now possesses the gem of. Spoilers, sorry, I didn't feel like putting a spoiler warning at the beginning of this specific video. She was ever loving, unconditionally, in fact, and for centuries she waited for her lovely Pink Diamond to return, only to find out she had been abandoned, and now the owner of Pink Diamond's gem, Steven, had moved on without ever knowing about her. This caused a crack in her psyche, and throughout the whole film she had ensured a doomsday device to destroy everything Steven loves simply because he had never been there for her. And during their giant clash, as Steven attempts to sing to Spinel to let her know it doesn't have to be this way, that it's okay to change for the better. You can't just make everything better by singing some stupid song! I also just not good enough! Just not good enough for Pink, but now I'm not good at all! What am I doing? Why do I want to hurt you so bad? I'm supposed to be your friend. This was the scene that got me. Because I had known people like this, people who had been hurt, damaged, and so they all knew, all they knew was how to damage back. And at the end of the day, to see a character so hurt and now realizing that dealing more hurt to someone else did absolutely nothing to solve the problem, that got me but it only got me because it just made sense. Because I felt a real connection to it and truly felt like there was something being represented in there that I could relate to. It hit close enough to home that it caused my heart to hurt. And that, that is what separates the incredibly intense, jaw-dropping and heart-wrenching character moments that we have all come to know and love in our stories from the ones that never seem to matter in the first place. It's what separates the diamond's supposed redemption arc to Zuko's genuine redemption arc. It's what separates Darth Vader's change of heart from your typical power of friendship story that never seems to matter and is just generic. The true missing key is experience and empathy. So let's talk about that. I wanted to talk about character arcs today, specifically how a character changes and how that can make sense. Because too many times do we see character arcs that just don't make sense. They don't connect with us. They don't resonate with us. And I think that playing out a character arc properly in anything, any story, not just TTRPGs, is honestly a lot more nuanced than you might believe. And there is one thing that separates the good ones from the bad ones, and it's realism. It doesn't matter what story you're telling. It doesn't matter if it's the most realistic, grounded murder mystery you've ever seen in your life, or if it's about a strange tween boy with a magical belly button. If you find that center, the realism that is in there, that is where you can truly connect these things. The definition of a character arc is something that helps the transformation or inner journey of a character over the course of a story. The protagonist will grow and change due to the events and relationships of the narrative. That is simple. At least it seems so on the surface, but once you begin to actually play it out, that's where things begin to get a little more complicated. Because while it's easy to explain, it's easy to lay out in a definition, the character arc itself is far more important and far too crucial for you to truly go around or try to avoid. Witnessing a character arc or a character overcome personal struggles creates a genuine actual emotional effect within the viewer, reader, etc. Whoever is consuming the media that you are producing. And it provides catharsis. The protagonist's journey from struggle to realization and change can evoke a very powerful sense of catharsis within the reader. And it provides this genuine response to a story. It is almost the core of any story that you read. Any good story genuinely does almost always have a very complete and well-constructed character arc. But you have to find the ways of doing that that are actually going to connect with whoever is consuming the media. There are many cultures that believe that by telling a story, you can actually genuinely help somebody heal from an emotional or spiritual injury that they have received. 
And the truth is, this isn't as far-fetched as you might believe. There's a lot of actual medical and science backing for this concept. The idea that by telling a story and listening to it, you can then begin to heal. So many writers heal by writing, by telling the stories because it helps them understand things in a different context. But even more interesting, so many people can heal by inserting themselves into the narrative that they are experiencing, which brings us back around to the medium of which this entire channel is based on TTRPGs, because you are literally inserting yourself into the medium. That's the entire concept of a TTRPG, which means it's far more healing than you might expect. Now, let me back up and make it clear. I'm not saying that TTRPGs are therapy. In fact, I am well on record and blasted on Twitter for saying that D&D and TTRPGs are not therapy. At one point in time, me and Phil, otherwise known as Tulak the Barbarian, we're going to collaborate and create a long 30 minute video on the fact that these are not therapy. I mean, yes, you can receive therapeutic benefits from them, but the act of playing D&D and TTRPGs themselves are not actually therapy because there's not somebody there who knows the mental well-being that they need to guide you through. It is dangerous to treat them as the only concept of therapy. Are they therapy-like tools? 100%, but they are not fully therapy. Phil, get back to me on making that video. It's been two years, my mans. Eventually, we gotta do that. But that being said, I mean, we've all felt it. The rush of emotions and the deep connection to the characters when you're immersed in a great story. But have you ever wondered why the stories have such a powerful effect on us? It turns out that our brains release specific chemicals when we read compelling narratives, actually. They actually make us feel more engaged and connected. Dopamine, known as the dope chemical, enhances our focus, memory, and pleasure when we encounter it, and stories actually induce this. Think of it as the brain's party animal, getting everyone hyped up. Cortisol, the stress hormone, also grabs our attention and is also created whenever we read a very powerful twist. Neuroeconomics pioneer Paul Zak found that oxytocin levels rise whenever we hear emotionally charged stories that we resonate with. Similarly, this is what happens when a mother's body goes through childbirth. Now let me make it clear, I am not equating childbirth to reading a story. One of those is obviously a little bit more physically intensive and emotionally so. But there are studies that show the brain goes through similar chemical processes to childbirth when reading an intense story that we relate with greatly. And this means that the brain creates a connection that cannot be misunderstood or ignored. We genuinely resonate and it changes our brain chemistry whenever we read a good story. How many times in the early 2000s did people on Tumblr say that something changed their brain chemistry? Well, little did we know that they were actually genuinely scientifically correct. When you read something or watch something or imbibe something that is that well connected to you, it actually genuinely helps you change your brain functions, theoretically, for the better. And isn't that so Fascinating. This means that genuinely, the chemical connection is why we feel empathy and generosity towards characters. We literally make their journey our own. Our brain cannot help but find that connection. And this has some very interesting consequences. And let's not forget endorphins the mood boosters that make us feel good. These are released whenever we hear funny, happy, or unexpected moments, turning a simple story into a feel-good experience upon a simple twist. Plot twists literally give our brains a shot of chemicals that make us excited and want more. It's not just the plot that hooks us, it's how our brain responds to the plot. So the next time you're reading a tale, the truth is stories literally allow us to feel as if we are someone else's experiences. It literally lets our brain act as if we are somebody else. It creates new pathways in that way. And so stories are literally one of the single best communication methods that have ever existed, period. And that then leads us to realize that our character arcs only work when they feel real enough to want to put ourselves in the character's shoes. Which leads us to how do you create a good and effective character arc? You have to base it on your own personal truths. It's literally required. How are you going to create that empathetic connection if you are not basing it on something you've been through? Now let's be real, most TTRPGs are about saving the world, being an incredibly powerful magic caster, or warrior, or literally something you're not. That's why you play the games. So I'm not saying just make you as a character, but it's easy to find your own struggles and to translate that into a fantasy world and amplify it. And this helps other people connect to it. That is how you make these genuine character arcs. But beyond that, more importantly than that, the idea of making a realistic and connectable character arc is because you want other people 
to connect to it. That's why you've done this in the first place. I mean, what's the point of creating a good character arc if you're the only one who's going to experience it, right? It's because you want to tell that story. You want to share that with others. So when you look around at the other people at your table, know that you want to share a story that makes sense, that is real, but it cannot just be yours. There must be more to it. You must add on to it because in the medium of TTRPGs, the most fascinating thing is that you've put yourself in the shoes of your character, which means you are simultaneously exploring the ideas that somebody else may experience while also helping everybody else at the table understand your experiences. And it's why this medium is so helpful in helping people create empathetic bonds. And that is a true, genuine scientific fact you can look it up, use Google. It does, and it's really cool. But it leads to another and the most important conclusion out of this entire video. At the end of the day, a character arc hits when we realize that the character we are watching go through these trials could be us. It is the realism and truth behind whatever the story is that's being told that truly resonates. And because like I said earlier, stories are scientifically the greatest way for humans to connect with each other. And it goes beyond that. Right now, real, true, horrible stories are happening all around the world, as well as inspiring, great, and wonderful ones. And the largest problem with people is that it is so difficult for them to understand what somebody else has been through. And as I have connected back to so many times, neuroscience makes this make sense. It is so easy for us to not understand what people go through because the brain is not meant to understand it. It is meant to understand the symptoms, the problems, the consequences, the obstacles that we go through. It is meant to evolve off of what its experiences are. So why would you understand what somebody else has been through? But the hobby we've all chosen, storytelling, TTRPGs, connecting with people, it changes that. Because like I explained earlier, literally the act of reading, watching, experiencing a story convinces the brain to experience other people's emotions, other people's problems, other people's obstacles. It literally allows you to do that. It's beautiful. And it is why we tell stories. It is why we care about others. Connecting back to the beginning of this video, there are so many stories out there of people struggling right now. There are so many stories of people rising up to help. There's so many stories of people caring. One of my favorite characters of all time is Spider-Man. I mean, how many people say that? How many people say that Spider-Man is their favorite character? He's one of the most recognizable there is. But the reason that I and so many people relate with him is because he is just one person. He's one person who was given a chance, an opportunity, and we have all heard that mantra over and over again. With great power comes great responsibility. And Stanley, one of the creators of Spider-Man, constantly stated that he thought Spider-Man was so popular because at the end of the day, anybody could be underneath that mask. Anybody could be Spider-Man. Anybody could choose to do great things with their great responsibility and power. I think the thing I'm proudest of is the fact that people of all ages seem to love Spider-Man. Every generation seems to dig him. Any person who reads Spider-Man could imagine that he is Spider-Man. And no matter who wears the mask, they become part of the Spider-Man universe. You know, I guess one person can make a difference. And when everybody chooses to help, when everybody refuses to be silent, when everybody stands up and makes their voice heard, we all have great power and we all have great responsibility. I hope by telling this story, it helped you understand. Because I know that I took too long to understand. And now I want to do something about it. In the most genuine, real, and important way I've ever said it. Go out into the world and make it your own. And never forget to play your role.